Hey Clubhouse, Aaron here. We are now on Ko-Fi, a support platform where you can help us grow while gaining access to exciting new storytime adventures like never before. Head to ko-fi.com and search Hippo Campus Clubhouse in the Explore tab where you'll find multiple ways to offer support, from one-time donations to choosing one of four membership options, all of which allow you even more access to both me and the clubhouse with special ways of saying thank you, including a personal shout-out to you right here on the podcast. Whether you're a monthly member, a one-time contributor, following us on Instagram, or simply love tuning in and sharing our story time with friends, we are so thankful for your support. Now, on to the show. Welcome back to the Hippo Campus Clubhouse. Aaron here, and today at the clubhouse, we're learning about perseverance, patience, and unconditional love, as well as differing abilities, especially when it comes to hearing. With the help of a very kind volunteer named Mary and a very special pup named Acorn. So let's get comfy cozy and ready to open our hearts and minds with Definitely Awesome. The Story of Acorn, written by Timmy Sullivan, as told by Mary L. Motley. Definitely Awesome. It was a cold winter morning in the city. An icy wind blew drifts of snow across the frozen sidewalk. Men and women tucked their heads down into their big fur-collared coats like turtles as they hurried off to work. Under a large green dumpster sat a small white puppy, shivering in a tight little ball, doing his best to stay warm. The puppy didn't know where he was or how he got there. He just knew that he had once been warm and safe with a mom who loved him, and brothers and sisters to play with. But now he was alone and scared and hungry. I want my mom, he whimpered as he peeked out from his hiding space. She's got to be around here somewhere, and if I can just find my mom, I'll be warm and safe again. And so the little puppy crawled out from under his hiding space of the dumpster and set out to find his mother. He tried to follow the people who were scurrying down the sidewalk, but they were so big and they all moved so fast. It was hard not to get under their feet. They look at him and move their mouths in a strange way that made no sense to him. He was surrounded by people, but he felt completely alone. Finally, a pretty little girl came toward him with outstretched arms and a very happy mouth. She'll help me find my mom, thought the puppy, as he dashed up to give her a very friendly lick. The little girl smiled sweetly and touched him very softly on the head before a woman took her hand and gently helped her cross the street. The puppy tried to follow, but cars and big trucks flew by, just missing him. Drivers leaned out their windows, waving their arms and moving their mouths in such a strange way that he didn't understand. Terrified, the poor puppy dashed back to the safety of the sidewalk. Afraid to move, he sat down and began to cry. I'll never find my mom, he sobbed as a tear ran down his face and splashed on the frozen ground. Just as he was about to give up, He opened one eye and saw feet in front of him. His first instinct was to run, but the feet, it turned out, were attached to a woman who was moving her mouth in a very happy way, and reaching out to him was something that smelled so good it made his tummy rumble. "'Hey, buddy,' said the woman. "'What are you doing out here?' 
Here, you must be so hungry. Have a little snack. Quick as a wink, the woman scooped him up, wrapped him up in a very warm blanket, and put her in her car. As she drove, the tired little puppy munched happily on the treats she gave him. I'll bet this is the person who will help me find my mom, thought the puppy as he nodded off to sleep dreaming of his mommy and all of her wet warm kisses when the puppy woke up he was in a room that smelled kind of funny and a woman with bright red hair was bent down next to him she had a very nice face but the first thing she did was poke him with something sharp here you go little buddy this will help you be healthy you'll be safe here until we can find you a forever home said the lady with the red hair. The puppy was now at the city shelter. After he got his shot, he barked, Hey! Ouch! That hurt! The woman held him close and gave him a little kiss right on top of his head. She said to him, You're so tiny, but I have a feeling you're going to grow and get big and strong and do great things, so I'm going to call you Acorn. She picked him up, looked him right in the eye, and moved her mouth again in that very happy way. The puppy did not understand her words, and even if he had, he didn't know anything about acorns growing into giant oak trees. But at that moment, he felt safe and warm for the first time in a very long while. Sadly, that good feeling didn't last very long. The next thing he knew, the puppy was in a small concrete cage with bars on the front and a sign that said, Adopt me. My name is Acorn. He had no bed. He had no toys. And worst of all, he had no way to get out. He could smell that there were lots and lots of other dogs around, but the only ones that he could see did not look happy. It's true. He was no longer cold or hungry. But, once again, Acorn was scared. Let me out! Ruff, ruff, ruff! Let me out! He barked. I have to get out of here! Ruff, ruff! So I can find my mom! Ruff, 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 ruff! He barked and barked, but no one seemed to care. And so Acorn did the only thing that he could think of to get attention. He threw his water bowl about, sending the contents splashing out into the aisle. Then he started banging the bowl against the bars of his cage, over and over and over again. At first, it seemed to work. A nice man came and took him out of his cage and brought him outside, where a bunch of other dogs were running around, playing hide-and-seek in tunnels, and chasing each other up and down the slide. Acorn was so happy to be out of that awful cage that he zoomed around and around and around in circles. The nice man kept smiling at him. He didn't even mind when Acorn rolled in the mud and turned his white coat a very dirty gray. The puppy was having so much fun, he almost forgot about finding his mom. When he remembered, Acorn instantly stopped playing and ran for the gate. Ruff, ruff! That was fun, he barked to the man. But I need you to open this up now so that I can go find my mom. Unfortunately, the nice man did not let him go find his mom, but instead put Acorn back in his cage with a yummy treat and a pat on the head. He even filled Acorn's water bowl. But then he walked away. At first, Acorn was so sad, he just laid on the hard concrete and whimpered. But then he remembered his mom and how much he missed her. He knew he had to find her, so he went right back to doing the only thing that he could think of to get someone to let him out of that cage. Every time someone refilled his water bowl, Acorn threw it against the bars, soaking anyone who walked by with water. Then he'd bang that bowl against the bars of his cage again and bang it and bang it and bang it. After a few days of this, a pretty young woman wearing a shirt that said Staff asked a volunteer named Mary to take Acorn home for a few days to give everyone, 
including poor bowl-banging Acorn, a little break. He just won't listen, said the young woman, and we are all at our wit's end as to what to do to help him. Acorn had no idea what was going on, but he thought this woman just might be the one who could help him find his mom. So he stopped banging, and he gave her his best smile. Well, how hard can this be? Mary thought as she reached in to lift the tiny acorn out of his cage. She soon found out. Acorn behaved terribly in the car, barking and ripping up the comfy blanket Mary had given him. Wow, Mary thought, they're right. This puppy just does not listen. Once home, it turned out, was a magical place with couches and chairs and rugs and all sorts of wonderful stuff Acorn had never seen before. He ran through the house, jumping on all of the furniture, throwing pillows around, grabbing books and pictures off tables, and generally making a complete mess out of the place. No matter how many times Mary tried to get Acorn's attention by yelling his name, Acorn! Acorn just kept running around like a white little tornado, destroying everything in his path. He just won't listen, thought Mary. Finally, when Acorn was all worn out, Mary managed to carry him into his own room with a nice soft bed and a comfy crate and a very big bone to chew on. Acorn was so happy to be out of his awful cage that he slept through the night, dreaming about his mom. The next morning, Mary went to check on little Acorn. She called him from outside his bedroom, but he didn't make a sound. Then she knocked on his bedroom door, but still, Acorn didn't move. He didn't even move when she opened the door to his crate and called his name again. Finally, she gently put her hand on his back. Acorn turned his head and for the second time opened his eyes and gave a perfect puppy smile to Mary. That's when Mary understood something about Acorn that would change both of their lives forever. Poor Acorn wasn't disobedient. Poor Acorn was deaf. Acorn didn't listen because he couldn't hear. All of his life, Acorn's ears had never heard a single thing. Not the people speaking to him on the sidewalk. Not the horns honking when he tried to cross the street. Not the nice lady with the bright red hair giving him his name. Not the other dogs barking at the kennel and definitely not the annoying noise he made when he banged his water bowl against the bars. Mary immediately took Acorn back to the kennel so that he could be tested for deafness. Sure enough, it was true. Acorn had been born deaf and would never be able to hear a single thing. When Mary got the news, she cried. She knew that in a kennel full of beautiful, healthy, hearing dogs needing homes, it would be very hard for an out-of-control, deaf puppy to get a family to adopt him. So Mary decided to take Acorn home with her until the right family could be found. Mary was a teacher and she had trained dogs for many years, but she had no idea how to train a deaf dog. Well, she said to Acorn, I guess we're going to have to learn a new language together. That night, as Acorn lay at her feet, Mary started reading everything she could find on the subject. Finally, she looked over at the little white puppy who had suddenly entered her life and moved her mouth in a strange way that other people seemed to. Even though Acorn didn't understand her words, he did see her smile, and somehow began to understand her. The very next day, Mary started teaching Acorn his new language. It was called sign language because she made signs with her hands 
that stood for words that she would normally say. The trick was finding a way to get this whirling dervish of a puppy to stand still and actually watch her hands. Mary knew she could get Acorn to look at her by gently touching him and giving him the watch me sign by pointing to her eyes with her two fingers. Mary also knew Acorn loved hot dog slices almost more than anything. Now, the minute he looked at her, she gave him a thumbs up to let him know he had done something very good and then followed it up with a hot dog slice. Each time Acorn looked right into her eyes, she gave him another thumbs up and another hot dog slice. At first, Acorn had no idea what she was doing. He just knew he really liked those hot dog slices, and it seemed all he had to do to get one was look at Mary whenever she touched him and pointed to her eyes. But then, finally one day, Acorn got it. He figured out that pointing to her eyes, Mary meant, watch me, and he understood that Mary could talk to him with her hands. He also understood that thumbs up meant a good job. Acorn was so excited he smiled from ear to ear and jumped up and down with delight. From that moment on, learning his new language was Acorn's very favorite thing to do. Acorn wanted to learn everything, and within a couple of weeks, he was doing all the things a very well-trained puppy does. Mary would sign sit with her hands, and Acorn would sit. Mary would sign down with her hands, and Acorn would lay down. Mary signed stay with her hands, and Acorn stayed perfectly still, instead of running around the house making a heap of trouble. He even learned signs for shake, roll over, turn in a circle, and jump through a hoop. He always knew he got it right when he saw the thumbs up. Mary's favorite thing was to sign to Acorn to come and watching him run right to her, ears flapping and tail wagging with that perfect puppy smile. Mary was so pleased with Acorn's progress that she decided to enroll him in doggy obedience school to see how he'd do with other hearing dogs. He was the youngest in class and the only one who could not hear, but that did not make any difference to Acorn. He just did everything Mary's hands told him to do, and he became the class star. But there was one more language Acorn had to learn, and that was the language of dog. Because he had grown up without a mom or brothers or sisters, he had never learned how dogs communicate with each other. When Mary took him to play with other dogs, Acorn sometimes got in trouble because he couldn't hear his playmates' barks and the yelps and the little growls the other dogs gave, warning him when he was playing a little too rough. Acorn wanted to make friends so desperately, but the other dogs just thought he was trying to start an argument, and sometimes they might even gave him a little nip to make him stop. However, Acorn soon figured out that dogs sign with their bodies and mouths the way that Mary signs with her hands. For example, he learned that ears laying flat back and puppies showing their teeth meant, back off please, you're playing a little too rough for my body. Once Acorn learned the language of dogs, he made lots of doggy friends. Mary said he was the smartest dog in the whole wide world and called him bilingual. Bilingual means that he knows two languages, his very special doggy sign language and speaking dog. Now Acorn was ready to find his forever home. Every weekend, Mary dressed him up in a very fancy vest and took him to the local dog adoption event. He's so cute, people said over and over again as Acorn showed off his skills. But they always added, I wouldn't know how to handle a deaf dog, though, 
so I don't think he's for us. Two nice families did try to take Acorn home, but they both brought him back within a couple of days because he just wouldn't listen. Mary always welcomed him back with lots of hugs and kisses. She told Acorn, They just didn't want to take the time to learn how to talk to you, Acorn. It's not you. You're perfect. And don't worry, we'll find you your perfect home. But secretly, Mary was a little worried that Acorn might never find the home that he so desperately deserved. One day, Mary had to go on a very long trip for her work. So she arranged for Acorn to stay in a very top-notch doggy hotel while she was gone. The caregivers at the doggy hotel fell in love with Acorn. They played with him and they cuddled him. But no one knew his language. And although they kept moving their mouths in the happy way that people do, Acorn had no idea what they were saying. Once again, he was surrounded by people but he felt all alone, and he was miserable. It turned out that Mary was miserable too. As she sat on the plane heading home, she realized that she and Acorn were meant to be together. All right then, said Mary as she made a big decision. As soon as I get home, I'm going to adopt Acorn. And that's exactly what she did. Since that day, Acorn and Mary have been a team, sharing what they have learned together to help other deaf dogs find their forever home. Of course, it isn't all work and no play for Acorn. He no longer tears the house apart, but he's still full of silly mischief. Because he is so good at watching Mary, He has learned a lot more than just his signs. In fact, he started copying everything that Mary does. And Mary has learned that she has to watch Acorn as much as Acorn has to watch her. Especially when there's water around. Acorn learned how to turn on the bathtub faucet and hop right in whenever he wants a bath. He also learned to drag his baby pool out from under the deck whenever he wants a swim. He really loves puddles, and really, really muddy ones are his favorite. But Acorn does not like water when it's falling from the sky. He thinks going out in the rain will make him melt. Actually, Acorn pretty much loves everyone and everything. He loves meeting children and other dogs on his long walks with Mary. He welcomes all the deers and rabbits that wander into his backyard, and he enjoys just lying quietly on his back on the picnic table, watching the clouds go by in the sky. Mary thinks everything Acorn does is just wonderful, and she especially loves his sense of humor. Sometimes, when Acorn knows he's doing something wrong, like trying to steal cookies off the counter while Mary is signing to him, no thank you, Acorn. He turns back so that he can't see her hands. Mary just giggles and kisses him all over and tells him over and over again how much she loves him. And even though he still can't hear the words, he definitely understands that his long search for his mother is over because Acorn has found his mommy in Mary. The End Wow, that was quite an adventure. I especially liked that Mary never gave up on trying to find a way for Acorn to hear and experience the world around him, and how Acorn rose to the challenge of learning a new language so beautifully. The author has written a final word that I would like to share with you. She writes, You might think that this is the end of Acorn's story, but actually it's just the beginning. 
Acorn was the first known deaf dog adopted from the Cleveland Animal Care and Control, but he was certainly not the last. Mary has become an advocate for the deaf dogs who end up at the kennel and mentor for other adopters who step up to bring dogs like Acorn into their loving families. Acorn has become famous all over the country thanks to his very own Facebook page, Definitely Awesome, The Adventures of Acorn. He has won generous Petco Foundation grants for the kennel and even appeared in the Petco Foundation 2019 calendar, as well as noted animal photographer Greg Murray's 2019 Pitbull Heroes calendar. His portrait even appears on a wine bottle. When he's not making mischief at home with his mom, he spends his day showing the world that deafness is not a limitation and that a deaf dog can do anything a hearing dog can do, much like a deaf person can do anything a hearing person can do. The first time Acorn looked into my eyes, said Mary, after I signed Watch Me, I knew he understood that my hands and his eyes connected us. At that moment, both of our lives changed forever. We are bonded in a very special way, and our mission is to be ambassadors for the deaf, both human and animal. I've trained dogs for years, and the truth is, deaf dogs like Acorn are often easier to train than hearing dogs because they are so completely focused on their people and not so easily distracted. Because they're not afraid of thunderstorms, fireworks, honking horns, or other loud noises, they can also become fantastic therapy dogs. Acorn knows more than 30 hand signals and is learning more every day. I have never worried about his ability to learn. The challenge for me has been thinking up new things to teach him. With his movie star good looks and a wicked sense of humor, Acorn proves every day that being deaf is not a limitation and that shelter dogs make wonderful family pets and that yes, pit bulls are just happy lovey dogs with very big heads. It's my hope that one day deaf dogs will be welcomed into homes as dogs that are not very different from hearing dogs. They just listen with their eyes and hear with their hearts. I hope you enjoyed Definitely Awesome, the story of Acorn, and maybe learn something new to share with those in your world. Thanks for joining us for Storytime. We so greatly appreciate your support. And if you're new to the clubhouse, be sure to click subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a positive review and a five-star rating. To purchase this book directly or to find others like it, visit our one-stop bookshop at hippocampusclubhouse.com. And while you're there, be sure to join the clubhouse mailing list to learn about new story adventures ahead, sensory-based activities for all, ways to diversify your family's library, and more. Until next time, be sure to tell your story with an open heart while listening to others with an open mind, just like Mary and Acorn.